Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Now, this is another group of men I don't watch. Um, I know who they are, but I don't watch their podcasts. I'm not subscribed to them. I only know them when they go viral for stuff. And from what I've seen, they've always gone viral for going in on like black women. Um, I know they have like a bunch of chicks on their show. They're usually racially ambiguous. Um, they love to call women whores and go in. So I'm just, I've never really been into that type of content. Um, they've run with like, what do they call it? The red pill community. There's a big tall white girl that's that goes on their show. Um, what's her name? The big white girl. She be always going in on women as well. Um, they deal with a lot of controversial people. Uh, they've had Nick Fuentes on their show before. I know they fool with Andrew Tate. Um, Pearl, thank you. The Pearl girl. I said the big tall white girl. Y'all know her name, child. Uh, her. I don't fool with any of that, that type of content. I feel like she just tries to pander, you know, that's who's cutting her check. So let me act like women are down here. But, you know, just mysteriously, I'm the perfect woman, even though she has no man and nobody's checking for her, really. Um, but so they all, you know, they all do their thing and, you know, they go in all the time on people. But again, I'm the type of person, um, if it's not for me, it's not for me, right? There's an audience for somebody. So obviously they have fans, they have people who follow them and things like that. And then uh, the Jasmine brand posted that I guess he got very emotional. Their channel got demonetized and they got removed from the YouTube partnership. So this is crazy. I was shocked when I heard this. Let me go ahead and um, share my screen here. I'm gonna watch this together. Okay, let me read what they wrote. They said, YouTube isn't playing around with the host of Fresh and Fist. Um, the infamous podcast, Fresh, real name Walter Weeks, and Fit, real name Myron Gaines, have been slammed by the public countless times for their controversial remarks and ideologies. You may recall last year they were caught out for speaking harshly to rapper Asian Doll when she appeared as a guest on their show, The Pull-Up. The rapper, the pull-up rapper ultimately walked off mid-recording after Fit was verbally aggressive towards her and claiming she was mean as fuck. The men have also faced criticism for their misogynistic commentary and reported hate speech. In addition, co-host Fresh, who is a black man, was previously blasted by internet users for expressing his distaste for black women. He says, I don't really date black girls. Most black girls are annoying. How do I put this? Ratchet. They don't know how to be reserved. Oh, wow. I didn't know he said all that, honey. But I got vibes from them that they didn't really like black women. So I'm not surprised. Then they're going to say another incident occurred where one man allegedly appeared in what seemed to be a KKK attire. According to reports, the YouTube previously warned, issued warnings to Fresh and Fit to clean up their content. However, it seems like the video sharing platform is done giving them slaps on the wrist. So let's go ahead and watch this video. A very important announcement for you guys. It won't be the same, bro. Yeah. The channel has been kicked off the YouTube partner program. Just keep it straight. If with you look right now, you can't even super chat or you can't even super chat right now. Yep. Uh, so this is the beginning of the end of this era. Um, we're working with YouTube to try to come to a middle ground and, you know, work together and figure this out. But for now, we don't even know why we, yeah, we yep. don't know the specific reason. When you guys send me your DMs and say, yo, you saved my life. Yo, you send me a picture of your credit score. Yo, my girl is making sandwiches now or whatever it is, right? We've helped a lot of you guys um, from killing yourselves, from making a really bad decision. What I'm asking you guys is just like we've saved you guys, we need you guys to save us. We need you guys to support us. Wherever we go, pressure fit, you guys saved my life. Yo, you changed my entire life. I'm not happy because I was so depressed. 
guys, it's gotten to the point now where even where we shoot the location doesn't want us to stay here. Yeah. I didn't want to fucking have to say that shit. I really don't want to have to admit that. Dude, there is like, there is a matrix, man. Like people don't want you guys to get this message. Dude. I love doing this. I'd be lying to you guys if I didn't say I didn't love doing this. I left a job that I truly loved to do this, right? Because I shouldn't be admitting this, but saving children, right? That was great. But saving you guys is better. Um. All right, let me come back on the screen. Let me go here. This is the perfect moment and pull out my little tiny violin, put it in my chin and shit. Near, 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 near. Okay, so I had to pull out the tiny violin for them. Okay, let me say this. First and foremost, I, I would never come on here and gloat about anybody losing their channel, um, being demonetized. Um, because again, we all do this, right? This is our bread and butter. This is a lot of our income, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like I, I can never gloat on anybody's downfall. Cause like I said, I never watched them. So I was never a fan, but I will say this from what a lot of people have said, they've done a lot of controversial things. They've had a lot of controversial people on their platforms. They've been disrespectful to women. They've done a lot of just weird stuff over and over again. And so before they started doing this, and they've grown a lot. They started in 2020. So let me go ahead and, and break something down to a lot of people, what people don't understand. A lot of people treat social media, YouTube, and platforms like this as a joke. And to me, I've always looked at this as a blessing, okay? I am blessed to be able to make a livelihood, giving my opinion, creating content. You know, the fact that I have people who genuinely support me, that is a blessing that I don't take lightly. So many times people come onto YouTube and for them, they look at it as, as a race. It's a race to get to a million subscribers. And because they want to be at, a, I guess the million is a golden number. You know what I'm saying? And because they're in a race to get to a million followers and, you know, be the, 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 the big person on YouTube, they're willing to throw all common sense and integrity out the window. So you got folks who just blatantly lie, make up shit, pull shit out their ass, you know, in hopes of going viral. You have folks who coon and clown. You have people who go in on, you know, black women because, you know, black women, if you disrespect black women, you'll get tons of views. So you have people who have come into the YouTube space in the past, you know, let's say five years or so, and they've treated YouTube as a race. They lack integrity. They, they lack morals. Um, and so, and of course, you know, the money's coming in from all the controversy. So the money is, of course, blowing their head up. And this is how you can always tell people who've never had shit before social media. And I'm not talking about necessarily money, but even it can be girls. Uh, people who genuinely like them. Because again, when you're rich in your home life, when you're when you have a good circle of friends, when you have, you know, family, people who genuinely care about you once this laptop is closed, once this camera's off, social media is not going to gas you up that much where you come out of character, is what I'm saying. You have a lot of people who weren't shit growing up. Nobody liked them. They were nasty on the playground. They were nasty at school. And now they found a platform and they have people's attention because they're loud and, you know, just whatever. And so it starts to go to their head. They start to think that they're bigger than the motherfucking program. OK, but one thing is you will be humbled very, very quickly when you lead with that spirit, when you lead with that type of attitude, because you can have it today and it can be easily gone tomorrow. Another thing I always told myself is that I never want to do something on the internet that I end up regretting why I can't go and then go back to a regular nine to five. Because from what I hear, 
this man, well, I think one of them did IT and the other one worked in law enforcement. They had decent jobs. Okay. If this ends today, I can always go back to IT. I can always go apply back at Target while I was doing IT in corporate. My pussy's not all over the internet. I don't have to come on here and, and you know, make topless vlogs. I don't have to come on here and disrespect people. When you Google my name, it's not attached to a bunch of muck. Yeah, you got haters, people don't like me, who gives a fuck? Everybody got them. But I'm not attached to a bunch of muck. So the, the problem is now why they're really in the hole and why they're really feeling, feeling the pressure because a lot of these people, they start getting these YouTube checks, right? And they have way more followers than me. They have what, like probably 2 million followers or something. So they're used to that money, the ad revenue, the super chats, all that stuff. And he's saying that they did this for the, for the children. For, he, he said he's doing this for the fans, even though he cares about the children, it's for the fans. Well, yeah, that's a part of it. But let's not forget the money. Nobody would be doing this if there wasn't a bag to be had. You think we're done with all this stress, pressure, you know what I'm saying? People trolling you, people doxing your family, people harassing your family, people, you know, the stuff that you go through when you expose yourself to social media, if there wasn't a bag to be had. So yeah, I'm sure he cares about his fans, but he was also making money. And he was also making more money on YouTube than he could ever have dreamt to make doing law enforcement. Let's keep that real. A lot of social media people make more money on social media than people who work hard nine to five jobs, doing construction, being nurses and things like that. The girl, Pinky, who got her coochie all over the internet, the one that's, that plays the non-playable the non character, the NCPs, she makes $7,000 a day acting like some type of AI robot. So you have people on social media who make good money doing the most basic stuff, right? So for him to act like it's just about the fans, no, your income has, is now gone. And that's always been my issue with some of these influencers. And what I see a lot in like the male space is that they act like they're not getting their money from YouTube. Everything's an investment. And I, you know, I do real estate and I do this and that. And, and I got my money because of generational. No, you're getting a YouTube check. You're getting a check from YouTube. That's okay. It's a real job. You got to pay taxes on it. Why do people act like that's, like, like that's something to be ashamed of? I'm a proud YouTuber. Yeah, they demonetize some of my content, but I also get a YouTube check. Nobody would be creating content if they weren't getting a check. And I don't understand why so many guys come online and act like that's not why they're online. Like somehow it's beneath them to say that you're here for a YouTube check. Somebody wrote Young Pharaoh, right? As soon as they snatch his channel up, you know, it's peace, peace, family, uh, you know, join me on Patreon. Da, 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 because again, it, you were getting a YouTube check, period. So now they want everybody to support them in the way they have given advice and supported other people. And like I said, I'm sure they got their fans. And I'm sure maybe, a, you know, a, hopefully, you know, a majority of their fans will sustain their income and, you know, follow them to rumble wherever they decide to go. But this is where you're going to find out who really supports you. And this is why I said is the difference. You have a lot of people. Yes, they get views. They get millions of subscribers. Their channels are way bigger than mine. Vlad TV, I think he's at probably 3 million subscribers. But are they really watching you because they fuck with you, Vlad? Because they fuck with you fresh and fit? Or do you have a bunch of hate watchers and nosy people? So now let's see, now that your channel's gone, are you able to sustain the same livelihood, the same income, the same support that you had? Because see, it's easy to talk reckless. And I'm not saying that they did this. Like I said, I don't watch them. But I'm saying I've seen some people taught reckless to their fans, shit on them. I'm this and I got a brand new this and a Ferrari and this, this and that. I'm that girl, I'm that guy. And then once that income runs out, then it's, hey, y'all, I need y'all to come and support me. The same people that you spent the past four or five years when shit was on the up and up, the same ones that you shitted on, now you want them to support you monetarily? How does that work? 
So I, I find it just very, very interesting. Another thing I want to say is this. As content creators, stop letting people gas you up to say stuff that you know can get you in trouble if this is your main source of income, if this is your livelihood. Because further on in the video, they said they have a staff of 20 people. Because again, everybody wants to be a boss. And you can't feel like a boss until you're cutting checks, until you're, you're um, paying people's paychecks. There's different types of bosses. I've never wanted to be that type of boss. I don't want that type of responsibility. So when I hire people to do stuff for me, because I'll pay you, but it's not, it's just, what is that where I can't even think of the word when you're not an employee and you just contract work, contract work. I deal with contract because I don't ever want you to think, I don't ever want somebody's livelihood to be based off of something as volatile as YouTube or social media. So if that don't make me a boss, because I don't have a staff, you know, everybody's awesome. My team, my team, my staff, my staff. I don't want a staff. Because if all this ends tomorrow, I got to make sure T and her kids are good. I don't want the stress of you, your family, your baby daddy, your husband. I don't want the stress of 20 people's income on me. So watch out for a lot of these folks who sit around bragging about stupid shit. Because now, not only were they doing clown stuff, where they've lost their income, these innocent 20 people who are probably, you know, people that they hire to write their blogs and create their content and whatever else, now they're out of work. Everybody wants to talk like they're such a boss and an entrepreneur and everybody knows about stock and, and uh, you know, uh, NFTs and it's just a bunch of mush mouth stuff. And I, I just really wish people would wake up and understand the real people who are really on here and the fakes. You got a bunch of fake ass people, yes, the Bitcoin too, who sit up here faking it till they make it. And then when they get themselves in these situations, now it's all this, oh, and you know, oh, their energy is totally different. That man, that was real. When he got up and started crying, that's emotion. I feel bad. But look at all the stuff that you did. If you really needed this and this was your main source of income, you got to follow the rules. And these content creators need to stop letting their audience gas them into doing stupid shit, saying stupid stuff. Because, see, the ones who will gas you up to sit there and put on a KKK, you know what I'm saying, hoodie, and act like you're a Klansman and, and you know, talk down to black people. The ones who will gas you up to disrespect women, let's see if those same people who gas you up to do that are going to support you monetarily. Because you can't gas me up to do no stupid shit. When we all came onto YouTube, there are rules and regulations. And if they say, I can't say this and I can't say that, it's their platform. I don't run this. They're my boss. So what can I do to circumvent that? Create my deep dives, have my own little discord, have my own Patreon if I want to talk about things deeper. But I'm not going to let the audience gas me into coming on here and, and saying all types of stuff that I know is going to be against community guidelines. If that's a source of income for me, that's silly. Because like I said, people will gas you up and hype you up. All the while they're at their desk working their nine to five. Their income's not affected right now. They're eating popcorn and sipping tea, watching all this fuck shit while you're over here crying, trying to figure out how to regroup. So I'm not celebrating this because again, I think it's sad for anybody to be demonetized. You know, I don't wish bad on anybody's channel because again, you never know. You know what I'm saying? You just, you just never know. I know a lot of good truther channels that were demonetized and their channels deleted. At least they still got their channel. A lot of times they'll delete your whole channel. So I, I'm not I'm not saying this to gloat or to you know make fun, but we have to start move we have to start moving smart. Um, Melvin Elephant said they lost millions of dollars. I believe it. I believe it. I'd be sick too. 
Because again, they have a very strong fan base of men who support them. They have a big, you know, like I said, they have tons of followers. They've been able to really like navigate their brand really well. They started in 2020 and they're already at over a million. They have a huge fan base on Instagram as well. Their clips go viral. You know, the Shade Room shares them all the time. So they've been really able to grow. So for that money to just stop like that, that needs to be a wake up call to a lot of content creators, especially the ones who really don't even have no real fan base like that, who have nothing but hate watchers. So when I see people talking as if this is their platform, or talking down to their audience or talking about how rich they are, academics, you're rich because of YouTube. Be humble because all of that can go away like this. Nobody's job is secure out here. That's why I used to laugh when people would tell me, get a real job, get a real job. Well, now the real jobs are going away too. Nobody's job is secure. I don't care if you're doing IT, I don't care if you're doing construction. Then people went to bed in Hawaii thinking they had a job to go to the next day. Home and income gone like that in less than 24 hours. So y'all better start being grateful for these platforms. The fact that we're able to make money off of social media, that was never supposed to be the game especially for black people. It was never meant for us to be on here making money. Let's keep that real. We're supposed to just create content and dance and you know, make skits. It was never supposed to be a livelihood for people of color. And now that it is, be happy for that, be grateful for that. I don't, I don't take this lightly. I don't take my supporters, the people who watch me, I don't take any of that lightly. I take my integrity seriously. If I'm reporting on something, it's factual. If there happens to be a mistake, y'all gonna know it. Okay, there was a mistake in that. We're gonna update it. Too many people are using these platforms as just a get rich quick scheme, like it's high school. I'm part of the it club, I'm popular. Knowing that they need this for their source of income. It just, it boggles the mind. So, I, I mean, I, I hope they learn from this. I'm sure they'll regroup and go on Rumble or whatever else. And like I said, I'm sure their hardcore fans will support them monetarily. But they're not playing on social media. They do not care. They took my whole Instagram. Thank God I don't make no money off of it. But they snatched my whole shit. It is what it is. Not about to sit here and cry over spilt milk, but this is why you have to have multiple streams of income. Anybody just solely depending on YouTube or solely de uh, depending on sponsorships, you have to have multiple streams of income. And if you have to still work a nine to five, there's nothing wrong with that. I've never understood this mentality People who worked a nine to five their whole life, all of a sudden they're popular on YouTube and they want to look down on the people who work nine to five. How does that make sense? When it's the people who are working a nine to five who are watching you for escapism from their job when they get home. How does that make sense to disrespect the same people who, who, who have helped to build you up? It, it's just, it's mind boggling. The arrogance that I see from people on social media. There's absolutely nothing wrong with going back to work if you have to go back to work. But see, the problem is a lot of people that they don't sell their name so much on social media, nobody's willing to hire you. He can't go back to law enforcement with all the clowning and the, and the, the foolishness that he's done on social media. That's why he's really crying. Because if this podcast don't pick up and pop off for them on Rumble, they have to go find a nine to five. But those good jobs that they had in law enforcement and IT, will they hire them back? I highly doubt it because now your digital footprint is sullied. No real corporation is going to want you working for their company.
This is why I say you have to act accordingly on social media because now social media has merged with the real world. This is not 10 years ago where it didn't matter what you did on social media. You could say anything. There was no such thing as being canceled. So you have to act with common sense. Like I said, when it's all said and done, I can go back and work corporate. Because I'm not tied to a whole bunch of nonsense. These two men, unfortunately, they can't. But McDonald's is always hiring. Just saying. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.